Hello Guts Brew, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with another painting tutorial. So, this one is um, a tutorial on how I paint my Sisters of Battle. So I'm going to be showing you how I paint a Battle Sister in this video. So this is a um, custom scheme, but um, I really just want to make the video, so um, if I plan on doing some more of these in the future, after a little break, because that's normally how I roll. I go from project to project, um, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. But I thought, um, if I make this video, then if I want to go back to them, in the future, then I've got a video showing how I do the scheme, so I don't forget. Um, I could write it down, but this is more fun. And anyway, if any of you see see my scheme on social media and you want to copy it, then I can just send you straight here to this video. So yeah, as always, before we begin, just want to give a huge shout out and a massive thank you to the people who support us on Patreon. And you can just, uh, check the link down below to see what our Patreon's all about. And um, we offer free shipping on our website, uh, monthly bits bags, and so on. So yeah, you can check that out. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into painting this Sister of Battle. Okay, so I thought I would use this Sister miniature, as she is one of my favourites. And yeah, as so I'm using mostly contrast paints for a lot of this scheme, at least for the base coats, she is of course sprayed in grey sear primer. So I'm going to take Agoros Dunes first, and this is going to be for all like the cloth areas. Now you could start with the armour, if you so wish, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. And I'm just going to apply it um, just as you do. No great trick to applying contrast paints, just um, watch out for any sort of pooling at the bottom. So try not to overload your brush too much, it's very tempting and very easy to do so. Give it a nice smooth finish, or as smooth as you can, like so, and really make sure you're getting all them recesses. Like so, and I like I really like this brown because it's quite yellowy and that contrasts really nice with the purple of the armor. So next up I take Shaish Purple, and this is for all the armour, and as I said before it contrasts really nice with the yellowy brown. And sort of yellow and purple are complementary colours, so they work really well together. Now it's just a case of applying this over all the armour. Don't worry about any sort of details like on on the shoulder pad and and that because we can paint over them later on. The only things I'm gonna mind sort of be careful around are these sort of straps. So next I'm gonna take some Saigor brown and this is gonna be first straps that I mentioned before and also any pouches that she has now added some extra pouches onto this one so just very carefully go around them like so So next I take some Grey Knight Steel, and this is for all the metal areas. I'm going to paint every single part of the bolt gun for now, but I will be going over some other areas with some other colours, but see the little details, that can be silver, so I've got a symbol on the shoulder pad now, of course do these gold. I thought I'd go silver. I thought gold might um, just clash a little bit with the robes. So next up I'll take some Gulliman flesh for her face of course. S 
Um, some of these I think have other flesh areas, but it's mainly their faces. And then for her hair, we've got nice and bright with some Achillean green. So, of course, you can do any colour on the hair, but I think this really stands out against the scheme. Really nice, and I'm going for something quite bright and vibrant, and this colour on the hair really helps with that look. Of course, you don't have to do them all with the same hair. I think I've got some of that on the face. I'll neaten that up. But so far, I've sort of kept the hair uniform. But I have considered maybe adding some pink, pink hair, maybe some blonde, more ones as well. I'll have plenty to to paint up, so I'll probably do some variety over the course. I'll just use another. Good thing about contrast paints because they're so thin, you can just suck them up with a brush. And where that eye is a bit blue, I should be able to go back over the Gorman Flesh and fix it. But I'll just wait for this to dry first. Okay, so now that the main base coats are down, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm actually going to give her a coat of technical ad coat. So you can use this for any gloss varnish. Now the idea behind this is that when it comes to adding some shade washers, because I want to darken down a lot of the recesses, so I'm going for like a high contrast finish on this girl. Um, with the gloss varnish, that will help the shade just flow into the recesses a little bit easier. Now don't worry about the glossy appearance of the miniature, if that's not what you want as the end product. You can easily just add a matte varnish at the end, and that'll take away the gloss. So, obviously you can spray this airbrush it, or brush it on. Um, I'm recording this about 11 o'clock at night, so you can't really take it outside to spray. Certainly cannot put on um, the air compressor, uh, especially with a toddler in the next room fast asleep. Um, I'm even doing the hair on the face. Like I say, we'll take away all that shininess later on. And um, there are some areas where I'm going to paint black, but I thought I'll um, do them after. They don't, they're not really going to benefit from the wash at all, so I'll get all the washes done. And as I said, it's quite late at night here, so I'm going to give this overnight to dry. Um, but you probably only need to give it maybe a couple of hours. Maybe not even that, I don't really know how long it takes to dry. It's one of them stages that I always do last and then just leave it, so... Um, yeah. But yeah, so... The next step will be to add some shade washers. Okay, so... Here she is, looking all shiny. Now I'm going to grab some Nuln Oil. Get it over all the metal areas for sure. Let's say we'll add some black to a bolt gun later on as well. Now some of the um, some of the old contrast paints got a little bit patchy there, but I'm gonna neaten that up. Now what I want to do take some of this numb oil and just try and sit it in them recesses a bit. Deepen them up, or deepen them down. I guess it'll be deepened down. It's not important. Some really nice dark recesses. It's very shiny and reflective on the camera. I do apologise. Um, add some to the some areas on the purple as well. You won't notice it so much on the purple, but it'll just add that extra little bit of depth. But definitely more than anything you want to on these metal areas because at the moment oh stop going out of focus at the moment we don't really have any sort of contrast going on there even gonna apply some on the hair now it's thinned out just a little bit don't worry about it sort of tinting the surfaces too much um, I am focusing on working it into the recesses rather than just slopping it all over but I'm going to come in with 
um, highlights and such later on anyway. So yeah, um, she is so shiny. But that will help a lot with this flowering into the recesses. You can use some flower aid as well if you really want, want it to flow in there. And on my first batch I actually used um, oil washers. And they've done the job okay, but it just felt like a lot of effort when um, I could get a pretty similar effect with the known oil. But really try and focus where the colours meet as well, really separate them. Like so, so it just adds that extra little tiny bit of depth and obviously give some definition to all the silver. So I'll give that plenty of time to dry and then start doing some highlights. So next up, I'm going to start adding some highlights and I'm going to take some, some messy desert. And this is to highlight all these robes. So very carefully, just going to... Run it along these outer edges, and these raised areas as well. Fill that out a little bit of water so it flows better. And just work around the miniature. So next I'm going to take some flayed one flesh and this is just going to be just for like the corners. Now thin this down. This will give us a nice bright highlight on them corners. As you can see, as it's thinned down it'll dry a little bit more subtle than what's going on but I quite like how it looks. Of course, going for this sort of high contrast with these miniatures. So just work it on like the most raised edges and the corners, really. Like so. I'll just do a little bit. Put one brush. Just do a little bit at the top there as well, like that. So next I'm going to take some Jean Steeler purple. I'm going to do essentially a similar thing on the armour. So it's quite a nice bright colour. But it's thinned out. And I'm just going to hit most of the edges. So you can just run the side of your brush along these pieces on the knees and on the shoulder pads. Nice and easy. And for other details, such as the fingers, just make sure you've got a nice tip on the brush. Again, because it's quite thin, it's not going to be this bright when it dries, which is exactly what, what I want. So, just work around all the armour, you get a nice edge highlight. Next up, I take some Araman Blue, do some highlights on the hair. Just some lines of this colour. Just following the strands. And this is very subtle, so use it to neaten up any areas. Matches the colour fairly well, just a little bit lighter. I can use it just to get a bit of a smoother colour on the hair. Just 
I'll add a little bit of highlight. And then I'll go in with a lighter colour for the final highlights on the hair. So again, the paint's quite thin. And if you want a really smooth finish on top, I'll we'll do a couple of coats of this. And then take some barrel off blue. Just for like some highlights. So again, just following the strands of the hair. Probably a bit too thick with it, I'll need to fit it down just a little bit more. These edge paints are slightly thinner than regular paints, but they still need to thin out a little bit just for doing these sorts of highlights. A bit too much on the brush as well. And that gives us a nice bright blue on the hair again because it's thinned out. It's not going to dry looking as sort of drastic as it does. I know I'm going for a lot of high contrast, but I don't want it to be too wild and unnatural. You know, you see where it's sort of drying. It's a lot more subtle. And that's what you want. And I'm actually going to run a highlight across her pattern as well. So next I'm going back in with a flavour on flesh just to add some highlights to her face. Can neaten up just that little area where it went a little bit blue earlier as well. Contrast paint. A very small area to paint the face. But I'm just doing highlights where I tend to usually do on faces. So sort of cheeks, um, the eyebrows. Um, I would do the chin, but well, I will do the chin. This is a tiny little bit of it showing. And um, so chin, cheeks, eyebrow, and upper lip. Her face looking like that, which for this sort of standard is certainly good enough for me. So, next up, I'll highlight the pouches. So, for those highlights, I'm going to take some Blood Reaver flesh. I'm finding this colour is actually really good for highlighting sort of dark, dark brown, so I've got run ups, hide, and dried bark sort of colours. Works as a really nice highlight for them. And she's only got a few little pictures here. So just edge highlighting around them carefully. Try to get a better tip for the straps. So very carefully just doing a line top and bottom for that. There's a little buckle there which I will go back in and paint silver as well. Just very carefully paint a line that. That's pretty much it for that colour. So to have a few areas that I had mentioned before that I want to be black. I'm also going to do a bit of gold maybe on the bolt gun as well so you know that'll be the next steps so the black is of course Avedon black so there's a handle on the bolt gun also I'm going to do the outside of the ammo casing to the black as well I'm going to keep the actual bolt gun silver I quite like the silver bot gun with this scheme. Let's get in there like so. And 
And yeah, so. Oh, gold. No, I actually. I've been using scale 75 gold lately, so I'm going to take this elven gold. As you can see, he's got all shake. But, um, they do separate, but they are good good colours. And um, you can use just um, Retribute Armour or something like that. But I'm a big, big fan of the scale 75 colours. Especially their metallics. They do have pretty decent coverage on them. So, that one probably needs a bit more of a shake, but I think that will still cover okay. I'm trying very carefully just to get on that detail there, and then I can add a little shade wash to separate them to two bits. And I'm also going to do a little skull on there. I don't think anywhere else. Or well, maybe on the shoulder pad, just a little skull on there as well. Like so. So next I just add some Agrax earth shade to these gold areas. They're quite low. So we can get away with just the Agrax. I will highlight the silver next. So for that I'm just going to go back in with the Greenite steel. I do really like this colour a lot. And again, just edge highlighting. Just going around. I just work around all these silver areas. And I'll paint in this buckle as well. So here is the finished Sister of Battle, Battle Sister. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how this scheme turned out. I think the contrast between the sort of yellowy brown and the purple works really well. And then a nice sort of spot colour with the blue. Quite like that. As you can see, she is a bit shiny still, and um, I will apply another matte coat over there, take that shine away. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I've also got a full squad complete as well, so really happy with the squad and the scheme. So yeah, um, I don't know when I'll be painting some more of these, I've got some retributors to do. So if I don't do them anytime soon, at least I can go back to this video to see um, how I done the scheme and then you guys can also have a look as well so if you like the scheme and you want to follow it along then this video is certainly useful for you so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and um, I'm always happy to take requests for conversion videos painting tutorials etc etc so um, please do feel free to leave any in the comments and if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to our channel we are on our way to 10,000 subs and there's gonna be a massive giveaway when we get there so um, tell all your friends and the sooner we can do that, the sooner we can give stuff away. So yeah, um, I'll see you all in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.